Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Dean Bear sitting here with a very special interview. Uh, Wintergreen Classic Tournament Director, Slimo Oregon. His son Troy is going to sign uh, for him. So, Slimo, thank you for having us. Um, first question right away is how did the Wintergreen Classic start? It started early 1990s. Uh, back then, uh, it first started by owners of the Wintergreen. Uh, it changed to uh, individuals who hosted it. Uh, he, he took over the last four years. And so far, uh, before it was a, a be, yeah, and it became an IRT event two years later. Uh, yeah. I remember that, so thank you. So, very important question right here, because I know this is, for, this is so true. Why do you love racquetball? It's very, uh, it's very important to our family. Uh, all four kids grew up playing racquetball, you know? Uh, so it was just, he felt connected to it. It's part of our family. Uh, we interact with a lot of people in racquetball, the community. It's all our kids, it's all our kids know, you know? I know this guy for a really long time. So, um, a, a lot of the fans know you purchased shares of the IRT uh, maybe about two years ago. Um, why did you want to get involved in professional racquetball? Uh, because he loves it. He loves the sport. Uh, he bought to help grow and expand the sport. And we hope that that investment shows our confidence in the sport. And people like you work very hard. At some point, you need to get better pay, you know? That encourages people to come and be involved and sponsor and all that. That's one reason why he bought the shares. Is maybe he doesn't make a lot of money now, but in the future, he knows we will. Very good. So uh, what do you see, not only for the IRT, but the sport of racquetball in the future? W like, where do you see the, the game? Um, we are in the process of building a, a racquetball with about 10 courts, a gym, and you could change it to uh, pickleball, squash, and different sports uh, called portable. They like get portable courts and stuff like that. So it actually helps attract people from different backgrounds, you know, and making the sport more competitive. Racquetball doesn't go anywhere. He doesn't believe that. He believes that it has a lot of possibilities and opportunities to grow and expand and attract people from, from different varieties, different demographics. Well, that shows right here in the state of Maryland. That's, uh, that's for sure. So what, what can we do together to grow racquetball? Um, we noticed that uh, most tournaments attract older people. It's time, like, the older people need to get juniors and the youth involved, and that will carry, like, how I pass it down to Dillard or, and it keeps passing down. Like, the key is to make uh, gyms accessible to people with, uh, not rich, but, you know, our goal is just, just make programs for pro poor kids or pro kids the less fortunate. Our... We, our junior sessions are free of them. Uh, do f food, drinks. At the, uh, at the grassroot level, we need to get that back up. We do. So that's Peak Racquetball on Facebook. Uh, tournament director, Slimo Oregon, right here at the Wintergreen Classic. Thank you, not only for having the tournament, but thank you for bringing the IRT uh, you know, uh, broadcast staff we had a great time. I hear in the future we're going to have a tier one here. Thank you for coming. Doing a wonderful job for us, man. All right, Slima. So we'll take a short break. We'll be back for the start of this wonderful match. Eduardo Portillo versus Lalo Garay right here on IRT Live.
the Gearbox leather sticks to my hand like it is my skin. The best feeling in the world. You pull that thing out of the package and you can kind of just feel it still molded in, into the way they packaged it. It's honestly it's one of the best feelings ever. You put the new glove and you're like, I got this. It's so light and so like comfortable that I feel like I'm playing with with my bare hand. The grip is a lot better, so I love having new gloves. It's, it's all about passion. I think uh, I, I don't have anything to prove anymore in the sport. Uh, at the beginning of my career, I wanted to be one of the best, but uh, I have nothing to prove. I, I play with no pressure. I'm just enjoying every moment. But uh, when people are cheering for you and 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 stop their whatever they're doing, their jobs or or to go watch uh, you play, I mean that that makes you uh, feel uh, good and. and and makes you uh, want to try it hard for, for and, and give a good show for that people. I'm Alvaro Beltran, get your M40 so you can play like me. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So Dean Bear here with Todd Boss of ProRackableStats.com. So this is almost a heavyweight fight. Uh, Lalo Portillo, you know, number nine, playing, uh, he's the one seed here, playing Lalo Garay. This very well could be a quarterfinal match at a tier one. It's possible. Both players went very deep into draws. Um, Portillo uh, took out uh, Joe Kelly uh, and uh, uh, Josh Pearl, I think, and uh, Garay took out Miller pretty easily uh, in his uh, quarterfinal match. And I don't know who he played in the other match, but this is a this is a heavyweight battle, Todd. What do you see? I see two players, like like you mentioned, both of them are ranked in the nine to sixteen range right now. Portillo has been a little bit higher than that. Garay has yet to get that high. He I don't think he's even made it yet to a pro quarter. Um, but uh, but Garay, I'm a big fan of Garay on the on the tour. He's an up and coming player. Younger guy, he hits with a ton of pace, and he and he moves around the court like as be, uh, pretty much as well as anybody on tour. So I, what I see in this match is a real contrast in styles, the really kind of the slow and steady with Portillo versus the explosive and energetic pace of Garay. Well, Garay's been hitting bullets. I've been watching. on. He was on court two before. I mean, he's hitting the ball a ton. Can Portillo handle that? Absolutely. So Lalo has plenty of experience handling these tough players. I mean, he's played Kane. You know, he's played he, he's played, played other Landa. players. Like, he's played Landa. He's played Franco, another guy who hits it with who hits a real heavy ball. He can handle these guys. The burden on this match is going to be on Garay and whether Garay can be consistent and really put the ball where he needs to put it to score. Well, we're going to see players are ready. Uh, we're going to be right here. Well, let's go right to center court. Players making their way on right now. I think the head referee Troy Worgan's ready to go. We are gonna, we're gonna have a good one, and I'm excited. Absolutely. So well, thank you again for coming by uh, to the booth. ProRacketballStats.com has all the information, stats, everything racquetball. Um, it, we're we're ready here. We're ready. So there they are. What do you guys see? I gotta I gotta load up the chat box because. I'm telling you, I think the chat box is going to be explosive uh, today. And what do you guys see 
in this match. I'd love to hear from some of the fans. What do you see? What do you hear in this match? What do you expect to see? Um, you mentioned, uh, Todd, I think you pulled up, you were looking at some information before. They, these guys played before? These guys have, have matched up one time that we know of. And it was in Lombard, at, you know, at, and, and, and it wasn't in the in pro, a men's open. It wasn't in the pro, it was not in the pro draw. It was in the men's open draw, at uh, the St. Patrick's Day uh, uh, event in I believe 2019. Um, Portillo beat Garay in that match. You know, and uh, but that was a little bit a that was a little while ago. I think Garay has got a lot more experience, a lot more touring experience since then. I think you said that was uh, the 34th, so that was 2019. Yeah. Um, that was pretty much the uh, right prior to the pandemic. Yeah. That was, that was our last event. Uh, but I tell you, Garai has come a long way since March 2019. And to be honest, I, I'm interested to see if uh, Lalo Portillo can mm -hmm. really handle the pace of the ball. Yeah. And because, you know, what, one of the things that these guys haven't been doing, um, and, and this is where Garay's um, game elevates. Over the past year in the pandemic, uh, down in uh, Atlanta, down in uh, Orlando, Garay plays, you know, with Team Zurich, uh, plays again with Sebastian Franco a lot, mm -hmm. plays with Juan Pablo. Um, they recently, as of December, started being trained by Fran Davis. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Lalo has shown a lot. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. So Lalo comes out. Lalo comes out with a drive serve to the right, you know, which is a complete, uh, completely different than what we saw him uh, working on in his earlier match. You know, clearly trying to clearly trying to work a classical drive serve. Yeah, but the key is is when Garay gets in that box. Yes, <laughs> to be honest. A little too high, that's left up. Oof. Beautiful down the line shot by Eduardo Garay. Want to say hello to everybody in the chat box. Please like our post, share our feed. Let's see the, I mean, people are dying to watch racquetball. Mm -hmm. It's been evident with our numbers this weekend. This is going to come off the back wall. And that's, oh, I skipped it in. But that's what Lalo Garay has to keep the ball off the back mm -hmm. wall, especially with that return mm -hmm. of serve. I, mm -hmm. I, I don't I don't see why mm -hmm. uh, Portillo would would even think that that was a good ball. I mean, from up here, that clear that was clear. You know, he probably thought that he hit it down and into the wall, uh, down and into the ground, which maybe maybe not. He didn't he didn't uh, complain too much here. Bomb one short. So for those listening at home, uh, when Garai was warming up, you literally couldn't hear yourself on a phone. Uh, <laughs> Uh, if you're standing too close. Ooh, what a good, sh what a good serve right there, and a really good pickup by Portillo. Probably could have let that. Nice, shot. nice, had him, That's had well him done. dead to rights. Behind him, yep. easy pin shot. Yep. International racquetball tour would love to thank all the players that participate in any one of our events, even this. 2001 Winter, Wintergreen Classic Pro-Am Tier 5. Mm -hmm. um, and all the millions of you guys that watch at home like our post share our feed. Special thanks to Slimo and Charity Worrigan, Bill Milbach, and the whole staff here at the Severna Park Racquetball and Fitness Center. Tough. That was a beautiful kill shot. So this club is recently Ooh, changed. Called, he called it skipped Ooh, in. called that a skip. Hmm, okay. Now, for Garay, just need to take that. Okay, uh, overheld on appeal. Yeah, I mean, Garay wasn't even going to wasn't even gonna try to argue that. So so this club recently changed hands. It's a family-owned business. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're, the sons work at the desk. Uh, you know, they're, they're running garbage in the locker room. So I, I'm going to tell you, the staff here uh, have been dying for some uh, activity. And from what, uh, not the staff, but the ownership, from what I saw and what, what I talked to them, they were very excited that an event's going to be here. There's a lot of events in the future lined up for this particular club. Mm -hmm. There's going to be an LPRT event. We're going to have an IRT tier one. Mm -hmm. An NM NMRA is going to have an event here. Yeah. Activity here, Severna Park, uh, Racquetball and Fitness Club. 
No, this is wh what's happened here in the uh, in the little corridor, kind of north of D.C. and south of Baltimore. Uh, they have uh, recently lost one of their long-standing clubs that that hosted a lot of tournament programming. Laurel. The, the Laurel Club. Uh, decided the owner decided to close shop. Uh, ended up selling to the city. They're going to probably turn it into a rec center. But in the meantime, a lot of players have moved over to this club. They've moved over to other clubs in the area. And this is now going to be the, the, the tournament shop. It's got this great tiered seating spot for the, and a show court that you don't really see a whole lot around the country anymore. And, uh, the, and like you mentioned, the owners are really excited to start bringing in more programming. Well, I mean, nothing for nothing, too. A tournament brings in not only people to the facility, but it also generates revenue. Let's, yeah. let's be let's be real about no, it. No, it does. That it generated revenue just now when I when I bought a hot dog for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's the score here? Five one, Portillo, yes, leading on the head pen scoreboard. Not just the official ball of the IRT, USAR, WOR, and the LPRT. Head pen is the industry leader in all things racquetball. Check them out online. WW whead.com slash ragaball. Portillo will shoot this from 30, 40 feet. Sarai gets that. That's an interesting shot. Ooh. A little too much rough, a little too much rushing going on there. So, so, so far, here's what I see. I see Garai struggling with his service returns. You know, in the first point of the game, he skipped it in, and then he overcompensated and left it off the back wall. He's back in the box now. He needs to get a nice, solid serve and set himself up for a three-point rally. Just like that. And here's the setup. Spins forehand. Cross court Wait. hits the side wall. Lalo's there. Interesting. Oop, yeah. You got that. that. Well. And Lalo's in out of position, so that's not a hinder. Yeah, that's skipped skip. in. He's out of position there to get that. Yeah. Ball. So I saw two shots that, 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 that for me, Garai he purposely pushed him to the forehand. Did you notice that? Yeah. So I mean, a reverse pinch would have been a winner. Could have. Or, or you know, he had he had Portillo dead to rights if he just tried to do a classical, you know, pass to the backhand corner. But he pushed them both to the forehand and kind of like a little inside-out shot. Say hi to Tim Baghurst watching online. Ah, see, see Tim Baghurst is, uh, is going to be our biggest critic. No, no, well, no, no. We're we're gonna get broad. We're gonna get uh, director broadcast notes from him uh, tomorrow <laughs> on all the things that we did wrong. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, uh, Tim is the lead broadcaster for the for the ladies pro tour. Great guy. We did a uh, an event. Um, we we did the event in Vegas. We did a recap together. It was fantastic. So up next on the championship court, Momo Zelata will take on Sebastian Frankel. Hey, that's another, that's a little Maryland action mm -hmm. semifinal. Yep, another matchup between two players that have played each other an awful lot based on the fact that they both have spent a lot of time here in the uh, Baltimore suburbs. Very surprised, you know, that Zelata is uh, where he is here, taking out Mario Mercado. Nice shot. Two, zero, six. Yeah, no, that was uh, a lot of this. That was six taken out of three, mm -hmm. you know. And Garay is the four. He's supposed mm -hmm. to. He's supposed to be in this match right here. Mm -hmm. Franco is obviously supposed to be the Lalo. The one seed is expected to go all the way, according to seed. You know, but who has been training? Who, mm -hmm. you know, who's in better racquetball shape? We said it in January at, at our at our tier one event that a Grand Slam. <laughs> mm -hmm. Would you have guessed Sam Murray to win that tournament? No. Sam Murray who can't even leave his country right now. No. Uh, you know, and, and uh, uh, I, did a, I, I did an interesting bit of analysis. You know, that, that tournament, that, that, the, the Grand Slam in January, you know, like Kane was present. He was there, but he didn't play. And I think that one of the reasons he didn't play was what you're just talking about. He yeah, wasn't, he wasn't in tournament shape, and in you know? his mind, he, he – I, yeah. I believe what he said, if I can remember correctly, was, uh, you know, if if I go, if I, if I go out and compete and I'm not ready, you know, I can seriously damn. I mean, he's not mm -hmm. 20. No, <laughs> no, and you know, and he, and yeah. he's not Alvaro, who can just show up and <laughs> make it to the quarters and <laughs> well, call it a day. I I think Kane has pride in his in his in his accomplishments, and he doesn't want to show up if he's not 100. percent You know, that's and that's his right. You know. 
and I don't, and I don't blame him. Because what's the storyline? Oh, I beat Kane. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, you know, when I when I when I do my write-ups, you know, the 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 story is, oh my gosh, Kane gave up 12 points. It's not whether or not Kane lost or dropped a game or dropped a match. It's that's the storyline. He's he set such a high bar. Well, seven serving two. Portillo in the lead takes our first time out. We'll be back for the remainder of game one right here on IRT Live. The presentation supports uh, a lot of players. Uh, they help with uh, expenses and uh, room and all that kind of stuff. So it's a lot of help for, for all the players. It uh, motivates all the players to, to, to play more tournaments, to train harder, to keep our level high. It makes me feel special because they are uh, really nice people. They, they treat you nice. They make you feel like, like you're, you're important. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back, welcome back, thank you. So uh, Tim Tim pointed out in the chat box that Garay, he foot faults a lot at the short line before he serves. And then he said, hate you guys. So I don't know, we need to, <laughs> no, not true, I know Tim. I'm just kidding, Tim. Yeah, let's take a look at that. You know, foot faults have come up more than once in the last couple of years on the IRT. There's, there's many people that say it's a stupid rule. And I'll disagree. I uh, know I disagree. It's too. a rule for a reason. I mean, why can't I just go walk to the front line and serve? Uh, I'll why say. Why can't I stand in the back and serve? Yeah, no. It's I'll, a box. No, I'll say this. I once watched Cl Kane, or not Kane, but uh, but Cliff, give a a very clear depiction of why you need a short line. He sat there and he stood in front of the short service box, you know, acting as if there was no short line, and hit these bullets off the front wall that were two inches above the, the floor, and they were two inches past the short line every time. They were irretrievable. And his point was, you need the, ser the service box, you need the short line precisely because you can get too close to the wall. And the closer you're to the wall, the, the more consistent you can hit it low to the wall and stick it right over the line. To, uh, right yeah, the I mean, line. could you imagine if the service box was in the back and the receiver had to stand up front? I mean, that would be like, it would be so hard to make a return. Eight serving two on that head pen scoreboard. I want to thank the other IRT partners. My Pillow is one of our first outside industry partners. They have amazing pillows, but they also have sheets, mattress toppers, robes, and much, much more. Proudly made in the USA. Visit we all here at the IRT use them, and you should too. Visit mypillow.com and use promotion code IRT for amazing discounts. Good rally here as Garai comes out on top, but still six points shy. I mean, Lalo just really left that ball up, and it was a, you know, very easy, you know, down the line pass ball for Lalo Portillo. All right, well, so Garay's back in the box. Let's take a look at his foot and take a look at his service motion. Yeah, you're gonna have to stand up for that one. So he's saying his his while when he starts, his foot is over the sur oh. service line. There's a bullet. All right, I well, mean, that ball came flying off the back wall, and Lalo, even though he got a racket on it, it didn't do a thing. So that is the, that's what we, you know. That, that's what we want to see more of here. Let's see Lala Garay. Oh, flick of the wrist, the IRT. All right, go ahead. So, so that's an interesting point. Um, I've looked this up. So he's standing. So his foot is on the line, but it's but it's over. He's his foot is over the back line when he starts his service motion. It maybe it it appeared that way. We'll have to take a better look at that. So that is a that is a technicality. That is, that is definitely a very technical rule. Spins, Lalo. Good pickup by Garay. Really surprised Portillo. Wow. Oh, that's great. a great get. Ooh, they're a little too close for my comfort. Ooh, hit the side wall, and Garay got that one. Jump. Oh. Into the corner. What a good rally. Great rally. He's oh. going to appeal. Two bounce get for Garay. He got uh, that ball. I don't think he's getting that appeal. Two bounces for Garay. Referee called it good. Agreed. Agreed. Call stands. IRT wants to give a special thanks to Gearbox for being one of our inside industry 
sponsors. Gearbox supports not only the sport of racquetball, but many athletes as well. Check them out online, www.gearboxsports.com. Eh, it's close. You know, that's a good ace. Ace. Looked a little bit of a screen. That ball really didn't go to the corner. That barely hit the left panel glass on the back wall, the, the, you know, the, the furthest left one. I think it hit right at the crack. It was very close to a screen. There it is. You can... But that's something that, you know, a coach would have to point out to Portillo because, you know, you're not going to see that good diving ceiling ball by Garay. He sees it. This might be tough. Ball. No. Skipped, Skipped it. it in. Portillo Ooh. to Garay train. Left the station, ladies and gentlemen. Five serving eight as play both players mm. look a little winded, looking to get a little, uh, <laughs> maybe a towel break. Sponsored by Zurich. Towel timeout. So you mentioned Murray winning the, uh, the Atlanta tournament, right? That was his first ever pro win. Because, you know, and Kane, we also mentioned that Kane didn't happen, didn't happen to not play. So here's an interesting little factoid for you. Kane has missed a number of tournaments, you know, due to injury or to, you know, not being there. Since December 2017, in tournaments where Kane was not there, there's been six first-time tour winners and another three first-time tour finalists when Kane hasn't been present at a tournament, which I, th which I find is interesting because it indicates to me that behind Kane that there's actually more parity than we might think on the, on the pro tour. Well, you know, the, the the automatic wins like for Rocky Carson and Landa, nice I mean, they're being challenged now. Great kill yeah. shot. By, those, those, those top players are being challenged. Alvaro Beltran's being challenged. De La Rosa is being challenged by these guys. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's a, there's a new wave of players, heavily international, that are coming up. They're in their young 20s, and two of them are right here on this court right now. Ooh, broke that ball right on the serve. You know, but the, two of these guys, I, I would have, I would not be surprised in the least if these two guys were top eight in a couple years. You know, routinely making Saturday and Sunday in pro events. Garay, Garay is well. Lalo has been, as of late. Lalo is has made has made his way there already, and he's just. He but just, he has just, it been yeah. consistent? Mm -mm. You know, I don't think he's the ninth worst, ninth best player on on in the in the world. I think he's better than that. It just that's where his seat sits right now. That's nice. See, that's a nice shot. That's that's a nice adjustment to what could have been a an awkward ball, and he just took what the he took what he had. He didn't try to force another shot. Yep. Nice. Another time. Why is he pushing it to, to his forehand? He's in front. He's in front of him. Why not hit a reverse pinch there, or hit it behind him and, and force uh, Lalo to 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 switch his, his momentum? A different shot needs to be hit. That's for sure. Nice. I mean, that's a that's a difficult to shot to execute. You know, but but Lalo's getting a lot of success with that little kind of half hard Z. He's doubled up right here. Yeah. We got to be careful because when we say Lalo, both of them are considered Lalo yeah, by I, their countrymen. That's uh, true. I, Eduardo, Eduardo, Lalo. Great, sir. So we're going to have to say, Garay por ti. <laughs> Bad ceiling ball. This might come off the back wall. It doesn't. Ooh. Wow. Just a miss hit. Yeah. But a good one. You know what's interesting? That uh, very, very much like an outdoorsy shot there. Overhead, down the line. He's not trying to kill it. He's not trying to roll it out. He's just trying to move his his opponent into the backcourt. And frankly, Eduardo really had to. Uh, Garay had to really hit a good shot there to, <laughs> to, to to win that. Framed it. Set up. No. Nope. Skipped nope. it in. Portillo. All right. So, oh, a little, little comeback. Two quick points. Yeah, Garay's kind of. You know, he's right in the game. He was doubled up before. He's 5'10". Yeah, he's grinding his way back. He's doing what he needs to do. He's putting those serves where he needs to. All right, I want to take a look at his foot again. I mean, so that's, that's tough. That's a tough call. 
Just want to thank everybody in the chat box. Please like our post. Yeah, we don't have enough likes here. Why? A lot of shares. Thank you guys. Tough. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what a great shot by Portillo. But not a, I mean, it was not a really a good serve, no. that high lob nick. No. That just, it came off probably at like 37 feet. Okay, yeah, yeah, got it a little deeper. See, Portillo's very careful where he puts his feet. Mm -hmm. Coming down. Oh, see? Beautiful reverse pinch. There you go. Nothing Portillo can do right there. See that? Instead of instead of hitting an inside-out forehand to drive it to the back corner, he just takes the shot he has and puts it away. Yeah. So take a look, Todd. See if you're seeing his foot start outside the box. And yeah. it might be the the inside, like the the left foot. Ace. Mm, that's tough. Ace. Yeah. I'm gonna look up. Yeah, uh, it's close. You know, it's a case where we're seeing something from up top that the ref can't maybe cannot see from down below. Something that we touched on earlier. And sometimes a ref is just not looking for that yep. unless it's pointed out by the opposing player. No. Hmm. So something I wanted to note you, uh, for those at home that aren't here, the uh, the, the courts here are they're they're, pan, they're panel courts and they I think they play a little slower than 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 uh, than, than what you may expect certainly so, slower than a concrete or, or um or a lot of other panel courts you can kind of see this because you you can hear it in the ball play the uh the ball makes a really hollow ricochet sound when when they drive especially the the, the harder drive servers but it manifests itself in the forms of play because the ball's not moving as hard as they may be used to those who are playing at altitude or those who are playing at, on a cement court all the time. Big setup nice here. Nice shot. There so uh, Tim brings up a really good point. Even if he doesn't get a call, but if, La if Portillo says something to the referee as we get a Zurich towel timeout, even if he says something to the referee, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, it gives Garay something to think about. It does. Sometimes their strategy, this is the kind of stuff you see in international tournaments all the time. Um, their strategy in calling out rule, possible rule infractions, and getting into the mind of your, your, of, your, uh, mm -hmm. of your opponent, things like that. Team Mexico does that in a lot of international play. Sometimes they'll talk about clothing, but they won't do it in the beginning of the match. They'll do it, you <laughs> know, 9-9 nine, nine in a tiebreaker. So I heard, <laughs> yeah, well, that, no, exactly. Sure, it happened. I was there. I've I've heard interest. I heard an interesting story once uh, about Alejandro Landa, who was playing in an international event representing Mexico, and it was well known that he had a wrap or like a like a grip that would overhang and make his racket longer than the standard 22. So the opposing coaches knew this and were waiting for just the right time, and that just the right time was when Matt, when he was facing match point. Yeah. Call him on it. He's got to change rackets, get out of his, and get a point a, a point penalty, and it it. it it, he, he lost his focus. He ended up losing the match. Look at that reverse pinch right to Portillo standing there waiting for it. Garay into the corner. Portillo's there again. Pinch, pinch, pinch. They're both yeah. coming right back with it. That got very sloppy. Yeah. Ten serving eight. So uh, Portillo was up 10-5. Uh, that literally was maybe 10, 15 minutes ago on the championship <laughs> court right here. And it's Let's still, serve. it's been three points by Garay, three to zero. Portillo has stuck on that 10. I mean, it's not a bad number to be stuck on, but there it is. Wow, what a <laughs> splat right there. That was a great shot. I'm just not seeing good, you know, lob serves there. 
So what do you got? What do you got? See, I, I've looked so interestingly. We're, so we're we're <laughs> while we're uh, trying to commentate, we're also looking at the official rules of racquetball um, about this. So out. I've looked this Stop. up before. And a timeout by a great timeout for Lalo, Lalo Portillo. Stuck on 10 for, like I said, a good 15 minutes. Good timeout. Yeah. So we'll stay right here because uh, Todd's, Todd's looking up the, 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 the see, footfall. See, I'm not sure it actually. I, so if Tim is sitting there in front of his computer, maybe he can tell me exactly which, which rule it is. But I do not think that. I, I do not think that. It is litigated about whether or not you can have like part of your foot outside of that box when you start your motion. It says it says during the service motion, any part of the server, including the racket, touches the floor outside the service zone, is a football. I, I'm wondering if it's an international rule versus a uh, no. A USA IRT rule. has its own subset rules, but we follow most of the. USA racket see, rules, I believe the footfall would be the same. See, because define the word outside the service zone. Because if I step on the line but not over the line in the front, I'm not outside the service zone. So therefore, I interpret that as if I have my foot on the line, if I still have it, part of it on the line, I'm no, still outside the service zone. No, but if any of it is outside, any, it says, at the, if any part of the server touches the floor outside the service line, so it clearly can't go over that red line. That's... That's uh, very clear. Tim is correct. At the start. So they so they distinguish between the start and the end. That's interesting. So, yeah, looks like he is uh, a half an inch in violation. <laughs> he, 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 no, you can't. He's going off the back wall. Can't call that unavoidable. I'm sorry. Uh, 11 Garai didn't serving seem eight. To, Garai didn't seem, he didn't seem to protest too he much He looked like there. he was going to the back wall. Like just that was a save. Well, that's all right. I once saw our pro, ref, I, uh, Mr. McClellan, give an avoidable hinder on an overhead from the 39-foot <laughs> court. He knows exactly what I'm talking about, by the way, if he's watching. <laughs> a lot of splats, a lot of pinches. Good pick up there, but a big setup coming for Portillo. Down the line, and Garay is there. Interesting. Oh. Patil got tired. That is, yeah, that was a tired shot. That was the all those saves and ceiling balls. I think really took a toll that was, on Portillo. That was a that was a tired shot. Trying to trying to end the end the rally. You know what? I, you know what's interesting there? Garai dove. Uh, almost looked like he was diving before he knew where the ball was. Before he, before yeah. Portillo had finished, almost the like shot. what Franco does. Franco kind of slides yeah. with one leg on the ground. Go. Yeah. So last year, the IRT brought in a new sponsor, Optimin by Actives. It's an all-natural stress reliever. It's a food supplement. It's a food and a pill, and it helps reduce inflammation really fast and lasts a long time. I've replaced it with all my aspirin, Tylenol, and Advil, where, where, whatever. And with Active Optimin, it works fast for all my soreness and strenuous activity like skiing or racquetball because I do. So visit them, optimum.net forward slash IRT. <laughs> I'm going to need some optimum for my feet after I'll get standing you some. here for four hours. I'll get you some. I have it in my bag. <laughs> it's a nice little get. Ooh. Ooh, man. But not a good shot. Whoa. Oh, man, he almost got that. <laughs> I don't think he expected it to hit the side wall because it hit the side wall and he just couldn't get a racket on it. But we got another Zurich towel timeout. Speaking of Zurich, they yeah. are our towel timeout. Mr. Francisco Prejado, licensed general contractor, home improvement firm based out of Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. We service all ranges of customers from simplistic remodeling projects to the most complex state-of-the-art construction projects. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Francisco, for your support, not only to the IRT, but the sport of racquetball. He sponsors so many players. Mm -hmm. um, also want to let you guys know we, we do uh, some of our nonprofits. Rafa House is one of the biggest ones. Reaching your dream is give to RYDF.org. They support young athletes from around the world with much needed resources, both on and off the court, and to de de develop successful careers, not only in sports, but in life. And also the Live Like John Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, we have a tournament every year in uh, December in Portland, Oregon. And that is the Live Like John uh, Foundation Tournament by, uh, I want to say hi to Wendell Pelham, one of...
one of our friends of the tour. Oh, nice shot. All right, so Dean, what's the rule? We're starting to see a lot of towel timeouts because, you know, it's a little humid. These guys are sweaty. They dive a lot. Mm -hmm. And then they got a towel timeout. What's the rule on forcing them to change their shirt so you don't have to constantly That's do a towel That's a referee timeout? call. So the referee, can, the referee can call you at any time and tell you to change your shirt. So I, I've, there was a match, literally, I think it was 2000, I'm going to say 2019 in Laurel. And I think it was Rocky versus Sam Murray. And it might have been the semifinals. Scott made uh, Sam Murray change his shirt. It was five times. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Beautiful Scott. rip down the ra line by Garay. <laughs> so there was a guy that we used to play in tournaments here in the local area who was uh, one of the, for those of you who play tournaments, you know you always know the guy who's the staller. He's the one that <laughs> That's me. slows you down. <laughs> That's he me. takes every bit of the 10-second uh, the, the rule every time, right? Well, so this guy would, ooh, jeez. Couldn't a, catch up to that. Good play by Portillo. So one of his tricks would be to get a good sweat on and just dive and then be like, oh, got to do a towel timeout, you know, and then milk the time and whatever. And he would drive, a Rocky Carson. He he would drive people crazy. <laughs> But and you're not going to see in amateur divisions. You're not going to see the refereeing in amateur divisions. They're just not. They're not up. That they probably don't even know that they can. They mm -hmm. that it's in their power to do that. Second like how Portillo took a lot off that. Yeah, looked like he was. I think maybe he was going for like a little. Uh, a little. Um, what's the word? Trying to. A Reuben. A, yes, a Reuben. <laughs> I know what you meant. <laughs> just down the line, just no. Just get it right over the uh, line and, and crack it out. Crack serve. Beautiful cross-court pass Ooh. by Lalo Garay. So we have to thank the, uh, the sponsors here for this particular tournament. is 360 Degree Academy, Program Management Solutions, and 360 Degree Consultants, and also Mike Lippett, big fan of Slima Oregon. I want to thank him again for hosting this tournament here at the uh, at the Severna Park Racquetball and Fitness Club. Towel timeout sponsored by Zurich Constructions. Got a real, all of our accounting mm -hmm. out of the way. Thought thanked everyone. Now we can focus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. I like getting all that done in game one. It's there nice. You, there you go. <laughs> Got to pay the bills. That's a screen. A lot of people, uh, you know, a lot of players. I don't want. I want to call the screen. It's, it's either a screen or it's not a screen. <laughs> you, you know, don't, you get to call that. <laughs> you know, that's another one of these. Um, you know that that nice shot. That, that was two bounces. That's Good. in the same category as players who want to take the shot, and then if they don't, you know, if they're playing close, they swing, and then if they don't get a good shot, then raise their hand for the hinder. You know, yeah, I mean, you have to you have to raise your hand anyway. We talked about it last night. Like, if someone like Dylan was holding up, not not swinging against a guy like Troy when I said, and he got a replay, I'm like, you know, you, you if you swing and hit him, it's it's not going to be a replay. It's yeah. going to be unavoidable. I mean, like I, you know, I understand the the, the mindset. You know, you don't want to penalize the guy that made the wrong, that, that, that caused the problem, right? It all, that's what it all comes down to. You know, I, I'll tell you, wait a second, because um, Scott McClellan put it to me, and it, and it made a lot of sense. It's like a short. I, I don't want you to call it short. I had a really good shot. Mm. It's not a good serve. I mean, a, a, a short ball is short. You know, it, it didn't cross the line. And a screen serve is a screen. The, yeah, you know, well, a, a, but the... Where it comes in is where it's just close enough that maybe it's a screen, maybe it's a not, right? You know, it's not like we're saying if it's exactly 18 inches or closer to the body, it's a screen. You know, you don't, we don't have it defined that way, and, th and for a reason, right? And that yeah. way, you know, because I can stand in different points of the box, hit it further or closer away from my body, and it may or may not be a screen. Literally, like the past 30 minutes, we had five points. It was 10-5. <laughs> now it's 11-9. Well, we've given our... Our, our, our uh, viewers, all this great commentary, though. So 30 they, minutes. They, so they're not even paying attention. Of, of <laughs> good, good <laughs> oh, shooting nice. on the defense side. We have 
tons yeah. of side outs. Yeah. Rally score and we'd be done with the tiebreaker. Well, <laughs> we talked earlier in the day about match, you know, in-game match stats. This would be great. To, this is what I would love to see right now. Like, how many, how many side outs have we had? Without a point. You know, how many, how many side outs? Here, here's the stat that I really want to see. How many side outs and points are gotten because of winners versus errors? Yeah. Like these guys Those are. Those are other. Is that what they call in tennis the unforced error? Yeah. These guys are hitting a lot, a lot of winners. Like these points are not ending because these guys are screwing up. They're ending because somebody's putting the ball away with a great what shot. This is going to make Portillo sh shoot even lower. Yeah. Yep. Looking for a broken ball. Towel timeout. <laughs> sponsored by Zurich Construction. Pablo, we don't have, we don't, we don't put up the towel, the Zurich. You didn't use the Slimo banner. <laughs> <laughs> Back, there it is. The Zurich towel. See you, See you tomorrow, CEO Mike Grizz. Just finished match seven of the day. Yeah. It makes you feel bad, you know, when you when you see someone who's, you know, playing multiple round robin divisions, yeah. you know, well past his retirement age. And meanwhile, I don't, I don't ever feel bad. And meanwhile, I'm sitting here, well, with 20 years ahead of my retirement age, and thinking, I don't know if I could play one match right now. <laughs> no, I they people ask that a couple times. I very rarely, if I if I go to an event we broadcast, do I play because it's just mentally, I just can't do it. I don't have, and then I'll lose to a player I'm not supposed to lose, and now I'm angry. <laughs> and I don't, I don't like being angry. I'm angry a lot. <laughs> See, Dean, I thought the answer was you do so much yelling and screaming on the court that you that you lose your voice, and then I, you can't broadcast. I, d I do remember playing in Portland one time where I did a ton of screaming, not only out of my opponent, but his uh, spouse up in the up in the. In You're the yelling rafters. at your opponent's spouse? Yeah, that, that, well, that's not a good sign. She said some uncalled things back, <laughs> and. And I'm from New York. We we jaw. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I, I thought Portland was, there was all nice people, very cordial people up there. What, what's going on with that? I was the non-cordial person. <laughs> but it made me win the game and the match. So. <laughs> all right, here we Back go. Back to the action. Speaking of new shirt. Garai. See, now, was that a screen serve? I think it was. <laughs> See? I, I don't care where it hits. So, uh, clearly, if if the ball doesn't hit that... That pay, let's see. No. But it but you're looking at where the ball ends. But it hit the back wall and spun that way. No, I I will disagree with you. And I'm I'm arguing with Pablo who's not on the mic on the <laughs> microphone. But you know what, Pablo? Now let me know. Why do you think that was a, not, not a screen? Not a screen. The ball is in the corner. And the server is in the center court. Mm. All right, there you go. It words of wisdom, Pablo Fahe. Thank you, Pablo. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, skipped it in. Wow, Lalo's excited he got off the 11. Lalo. He was excited getting point 11, and now he's equally excited getting point 12. Well, I mean, you wouldn't know it from his body language, but Portillo is still in the lead of this game. No, you, body language says no. Body, body language, language says he's losing like 10-3. I know, but you know what I see? I see, you know, I see that, you know, Portillo may be thinking that he was going to have a little bit easier go of this. And Garay's hanging with him. Garay's forcing him to make shots and forcing him to, you know, to, to put balls down. This is this is turning into the match that we wanted and that we were looking forward to. Well, twelve serves nine on the head pen scoreboard. Lalo's not scoring points. See, and with with a shot like that, great ceiling ball. Off the back setup. You know what's interesting? Oh, nice side get. wall hitting the side wall. Oh, uh, I don't like that at all. No, he deserves to lose the point, but he's not gonna because he, he dove and got that one. Oh, 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 oh. vamos, Lalo Portillo. Great rally. And and you know what? That that dive to the right side of the court. It really saved the rally. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hmm. No, I think I think because you know what I think, and and I'll tell you why, is I think uh, Garay really thought it was past them. Like mm -hmm. he really thought, like after he mm -hmm. hit it, like he almost maybe took a breath and said, "Ha!" Huh, like I'm gonna go serve now. No, mm -hmm. Portillo said no. 
Now you got to regroup and get back in and make another shot. And it really shifted the way the rally was going. Mm -hmm. that, that that was my point. I probably said it wrong. Yeah. No, I I agree. I mean, look at the look at the dry look at the, their, the skid marks for their dives are starting in mid court and going all the way to the end. Yeah, well, they're both, you know, uh, wiping up the tour. So <laughs> someone says, it, and it brought up a good point, you know, excessive towel breaks take away from the game. Yeah, I mean, it is yeah. what it is. You got some serious action. You got guys that are sweating. Yeah. Um, they're, 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 the floor is where they're, I mean, what people don't understand is there's so much sweat in basketball, but they don't really see it because why? Every yeah. time they go to the other side, yeah. there's nine people out there with a with a broom, I, yeah. I've seen it. Yeah, no, and and I will say for those that aren't here, uh, it's pouring rain outside. It is humid, and that doesn't help. And we've already have been talking about uh, wet balls, and I I think that that's part of the problem here. It's, these guys are sweating more than they would normally, and the courts are a little bit wet. Yeah, that's a nice shot right there. Nice. I mean, for right what there. it's for what it's worth, Gar Gar for what it's worth, Garai switched his shirt. You know, so if he dies, he's not going to get the court wet, and I. Would imagine, you know, a, a good ref would probably ask Portillo to do the same in the in between games. Game point opportunity here, Portillo. Into oh, the oh, corner. That's a two bounce you? get. I it was two bounce. And yeah, that's, that's a, a good call. Very good call, referee right, Troy Morgan. Yep, good call by our man Troy. Down that was there. that was that was good. Wow. Boy, that, that looked like it might have, that looked like it came out of the, I, I thought it was long from here. Troy's calling it good. Well, that's what you got line judges for. I, unless Portillo doesn't have any appeals left. Let's see, a very, very convincing. Troy was was speaking into the microphone. We would have at least heard the conversation. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, maybe he didn't want us to hear that conversation. So, did he say ten serves fourteen? Yeah, ten serves fourteen. Oh, that's, that's a, a winner. great serve. There you go. Once serviendo catorce. We're seeing wow. a little bit of tightening in the gut here. So I. I, I've seen some players, they get a nice ace to the backhand, then they throw one to the forehand. And Coach Fran Davis tells me, why? Just, you just scored an ace. Do well. it again. Oh, great get. Not a good shot there by Portillo. And this well, is going to be a setup off the back wall. Pinch. Yep. Wow. Winner oh. down the line. Great rally. Great shooting. Got a towel again. You, we should definitely go advise Troy to ask for a <laughs> for a T-shirt for for Dio. Yeah. Well, at least we got two people cleaning mm -hmm. up here. We don't yeah. have any towel boys. This is not like one of our tier ones. <laughs> <laughs> we got enough kids here. Like Sebastian Franco's kids are running around. Let's let's put them to work. Wow. Wait wait wait. He's wait, too wait. young. Where's Dylan Pruitt? He's a kid. Oh, look, he's look, twenty. Look. Yeah, he's a kid. 20. <laughs> By definition, anyone who's young enough to be my kid is an Air Force kid. <laughs> I don't know. I could have like a, I could have like a 30-year-old right now. <laughs> if I, I mean, theoretically, let's see. I could have a 35-year-old, and that's not. So, <laughs> true. <laughs> so, here's our goal for in between games. We're going to figure out who here will be the most insulted by being asked to be a towel boy or girl. And uh, we'll make that happen. Okay, towel timeout. Zurich Construction, 12, serves 14. Slow crawl back for Garay. Mm. Um, do you see Lalo ending game one? That's too much I mean, for deal? No, I was just going to say, I didn't get a chance to say it. With a break that long, I guarantee you he misses his first serve, and then he did. You know, you, he was hot, and... Portillo just got a free, basically a free icing timeout by virtue of having to towel things off. I, I don't think that, you know, people want, would abuse a towel timeout in a close That's game. That's short. Second that was short. Serve. Second serve is side out. There you go. Short serve. He can appeal. It would be a replay of second serve. 
Now he's asking his coach if it's worth appealing. Yep, now he's trying the appeal. Yeah, his coach is not here. I, th I, th um, I think it was. He's got a crew. I think it was. Got agree. Keep your appeal, but call stands. Oh, oh one ups. One, 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 one of the agreed line and stuff. one I must have it, disagreed. I thought it was short. Ooh. Missed opportunity for Portillo. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. That is, he's there. Replay. Yeah. 14, oh, he's appealing Can the replay. Appeal yep, very good referee right there. Wow. Cannot appeal a hinder in the pro tour. Wow. I did not know that. That's a tough one. What else can't you appeal? Um, is it just like so a... So it's like more judgment call. So can you appeal no, it's a... a judgment call. Can you... You can't appeal a judgment. Can call. you appeal a screen serve? Um, you can because your screen serve is not a judgment. It's, it's yeah, but it's didn't a you fact. just? I think you just said. I'm pretty sure you just said it was a judgment. No, I didn't. No, it's it's a fact, just like a short serve. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's short. Wow! Didn't give it. Didn't didn't give it to him. Game one. I thought that was a short serve, but uh, Garay did not appeal it, and that's that's a great game one. He's a game one, and it's 8.06, so that was nearly an hour on uh, on a first game. That's tough. Okay, sorry. So someone was bringing over the IRT rule book with me and said, you, you know, you can appeal a penalty hinder, but you cannot appeal a hinder. Interesting. So only for a penalty. Two different things. So there you go. There's a little clarification there. So Patillo edged him out right there. Mm -hmm. I missed the ending. Got him on an ace that I thought was short. But uh, a short ace. A okay. short a short ace serve. And but you know what? Garai did not say a word. He just he just shook his hand and, and walked off the court. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. 15-12. What a great game one. We'll take a short break. We'll be back for the start of game two right here on IRT Live. I think one of the biggest things about Gearbox is just the quality and the re reliability of their product. I know that no matter what I do, whatever product I choose, whatever racket I choose, I'm going to like it no matter what. It's something that's very comforting as a player. Um, to have a very consistent product in your hand every single practice session, match, after match. It's just really nice to have. My name is Bobby Horn. Don't make a mistake. Get yourself an M40 right now. Lindell, and as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. I guarantee you they'll be the most comfortable sheets you'll ever own. With the Giza Dream sheets, I'm getting the best sleep of my life. I do not like my sheets. I love my Giza Dream sheets. I guarantee you the first night you sleep on my sheets, you'll never want to sleep on anything else. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen right now. Giza Dreams are made with the finest, most sought-after cotton in the world. MyPillow Giza Dream sheets are available in a variety of colors and will be the softest, most comfortable sheets you will ever own. And listen to this. For a limited time, when you use your promo code, Mike will send you a second set of Giza Dream sheets absolutely free. That's two sets of sheets for the price of one. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Garai will serve game two. Todd, I have to sit down. My legs hurt from standing. I hear you. <laughs> Pablo worked me out today. We had a nice workout session with my personal trainer. <laughs> PabloFarhe.com. <Shortball. laughs> 
Well, I gotta I gotta stand to see over all of our uh, all of our gear here. Yeah, well, you can watch right on the big TV. Yeah, but then I won't get it, I won't get the, uh, the the whole experience. See, that's that's a great shot. See, that's what he was not doing in the first game early, if you recall. Yeah, he did it late, but not early. He was doing he would have taken that and he was shot it back back down the line, right back to Portillo. And he right now he's putting the putting the punch in a play and he gets a point. There you go. Nice, good point for for. Garay. I can see Garay going on a, like a five-point run here to start the game. You know that took a, that game took a lot out of Portillo, even though he's the younger player. Great serve. Bullet. Yep. Wow, front wall, side wall, rollout. Yep. yep. If I'm if I'm Portillo, I'm I'm thinking about a timeout sooner than later. At here. two zero? No. <laughs> sooner than later. 5-0. I, I, I think you'd be crazy to call a timeout before 5. See? But he's doing a little bit of a stall here. He's doing a mini timeout. With in, in amateurs, there's most players call a timeout at 5, 10, and 14. Thanks, see? Look and at it's that. It's automatic. Did you see that? It worked. Yeah. Raised, he raised his arm, iced him a little bit, Just got the long serve. Slow him down. Got to slow. You got to. Yeah, that's, that's right. Serve when I want you to serve. That's crazy. Well, you know what? A bad shot. That's a bad shot. That overhand slap that... What Tio's been doing? Yeah, but he's been effective with it though. He's it's very it's a very Today? it's a very outdoorsy type shot. You know, the overhead, low on the wall, move your opponent out of the way. He's he's been hitting it pretty consistent. Today. I don't think he takes it. I don't think he plays outdoors. And that's it, exactly. That's what I was that's saying. It's like an outdoorsy shot for a guy that doesn't play outdoors. He's just a really big guy and he thinks if he slams it from high to low, interesting little change of second serve there. Yep. Give him a junk Z to the forehand. Yep. Front wall, side wall, winner. 5-0. I think I... Yeah. Yeah. I think one more one more point on this run, he's going to have to think about uh, icing him. I would have went to the forehand. Oh. So I wanted to... All right, well, let's see what happens here. And then I wanted to comment what, what you are saying before about, about uh, serve selection. Because I have some thoughts there. Gotcha. A little analytical thoughts. <laughs> oh, nice. Got, Died in the corner. All right, so Portillo gets kind of a lucky bounce point. Let's That's see what, what you need. Yeah, you need th that. That can, that can kickstart him. And getting a little quick towel up here. So, you're, so I ace a guy with a, with, a, with a good serve to the backhand. Why would, I, why would I not go away from that immediately? Well, if you think that, I think that I think what players think is, well, he just saw that, and so now my opponent's going to be looking for that. So now I got to change it up and go to something else. And they're they're actually probably doing the reverse of what they should be doing. Right. <laughs> they should, in a tournament play, this is this is exactly what you should do. If you serve a ball to somebody and they can't handle it, you serve it again to them <laughs> until they handle it. And if it takes 30 points, you win the game, and you never see if they can handle another serve. So be it. Well. Uh, so, Fran Davis, Fran Davis gave me a really funny story one time. She, some guy asked her to play a really long time ago. So she said, oh. okay, so she started to play. As they take a towel timeout again, we'll stay right here. So she lob served the guy, and the guy was so angry and said, you didn't even play. Like, you, all you did was lob serve. She goes, well, you couldn't hit it. Why, <laughs> should, I, why should I do anything else? Oh, what, should I drive serve because you like me to drive serve? <laughs> no, my object is to make you uncomfortable. And the lob mm -hmm. serve made you very uncomfortable. Yeah, but it was like you're not even playing. <laughs> I once played a tournament, so you've seen somebody hit like a backhand hard Z where they, as a right-hander, they stand on the right-hand side and they hit it right into that corner. It's kind of an awkward shot, right? Kind of an awkward serve to screen hit. Screen serve? <laughs> yeah, it's like People call screen yeah, on a Z serve? Exactly. Well... I was in a tournament and I and I just kind of pulled that shot out. In my f in, wow, in the, what a return! Sorry. In the beginning of games, I like to hit a bunch of different serves as a tournament player and, and try them out, just what? to see what happens. Right? Yeah. I pulled that serve out against an opponent once in a tournament. Couldn't couldn't do anything with it. And this is not a serve I practice. This is just a junk serve that you just kind of pull out, you know, at game point to, to mix it up. So I I serve that thing for the rest of the match, and I, a couple times I served it right into the side wall. For <laughs> but he couldn't handle it, and, and that's what you do. Yeah. I had no reason to go to any other serve the entire game.
He gave him that junk Z again to the Tough. forehand. But Tough. look at that shot by Garay you from 39 feet. You know who likes to hit that kind of shot from a, a backhand above their head from 39 feet? Monchuk? Sudzi freaking Monchuk. <laughs> That's his signature shot. Sudzi, I hope I you're I got it. I got it. I, you're right. <laughs> I, I hope Sudzi's listening in Ecuador and going, yeah, that's right. Uh, seven, two. <laughs> so right. there's people talking about the air conditioner and, and, and stuff like that. I've played in places like Costa Rica where they have open floor plan. Like you almost, there's no doors on the building we're in or the facility. Everything's open. There's fans. But there's a lot of air moving. And, it, and their courts don't get wet. See, when you said open floor plan, I thought you were talking about, you know, kind of like a free-flowing kitchen right into the living room, <laughs> you know, well, right into the dining room. Well, free-flowing, going from the <laughs> lobby to the outside. There's nothing there. You ever been to uh, Hawaii? Mm -mm. In Hawaii, the airport has no doors. You just, there, there's, no, there's no open and closed doors. It's just open air, the, the whole terminal. And the guy in with a gun? In, Hon <laughs> in Honolulu. So I think we have a timeout. We'll t at 8-2, we'll take a short break. Be back on IRT Live. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> eight serving two, Lalo Portillo takes his time out. Eight serving two on the head pen scoreboard. That's and I'll ball. tell my director, the scoreboard is not up on the screen. There it is, eight serving two. So an effective time out there. He got the uh, short serve. Now he's gonna get the junk. Oh, a nice little serve here. That's three times, three or four times he served that. Ah, see, Ooh. I haven't seen him miss that all day. You know, he set up, he slowed his, slow, he slowed his stroke down, he's got the shot he wants, he accelerates through it, and he, and he skips it. Uh, that looked like, like it might be short. Forehand. And a point. Ten. I think that's ten, yeah. no? So, at, on this court, for the uh, viewers at home, at the 12-foot line, the glass ends and there's a net. 10 serving two on the head pen scoreboard. Garay that, that ball just went with out, a very net. comfortable lead. But I'll tell you, playing a guy like Portillo, yeah. it's not over. Mm -mm. This game is not over. So here's a thought for you, Dean. All right, two, he's 210 down, right? I've watched professional squash matches, you know, which is a different scoring method, to be honest. You know, but it's a lot harder to score in squash. And so I've seen players just basically give up at the end of a game knowing that there's just no way they're going to ever be able to come back. You ever seen that in racquetball? Yeah, <laughs> a lot. On the pros. You're, yeah. You've seen pros just basically ditch at, at 210 down and be like, I'm going to save my sometimes, stuff for tiebreaker. Sometimes it looks like Landa does that. Mm. There's, there's been times where he, his body language, he's, just stand, he's not in, in the ready position in the return. So whether it's 13 at 10-2, uh, maybe not. Oh. <laughs> what a shot. <laughs> But at 10-2, no, but I've seen players do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, at 14-1, I'm still not giving up. I want to You don't have 15. You don't have 15, I'm still in the game. That's mm. skipped. Ooh. Nothing is going right for, for Portillo except that last flick shot between yeah. the legs. Yeah, he's got to. Uh, this game, I should say. Let's clarify that. Yeah. I, you know, Garay's doing a good job of putting that drive serve in place and really putting the pressure on. Again, right there. Set and up. Right to him. Look at that. 
Don't Ooh, like another that. one. Oh, he's going to get that. So Ooh. He, he <laughs> that was a great passing shot. Player, you know, uh, Garay was up in the service box. Yeah. So what Portillo did was just, just keep the ball away and have it just kiss the sidewall to slow down. Yeah. So our, our, our complaints about uh, too many towel timeouts apparently being taken to heart by the crowd. Now we have uh, members of the – now we have spectators helping with the drawing of the court. Although that is – I believe that's uh, Abraham Pena who actually played in the uh, pro draw. So, Well, I think he lost the match that says if you lose, you're the towel guy. Oh. <laughs> no, he just wants to see the game moving along. I agree. Maybe he's driving one of these guys home later and he's like, listen, we got to go. Could be. <laughs> I see it. Oh, that ball's dead. So I sense a uh, sponsorship opportunity for you. What's that? Well, the broken ball sponsorship. <laughs> you know, maybe we can come up with like, uh, you know, an insurance company. You know, sometimes stuff gets broken. <laughs> you know, State Farm Insurance. You know, that's our broken ball sponsor. What do you think? Possible. <laughs> Boss Consulting. Boss, the Boss Consulting. Pro Racquetball Stats. Call uh, the Boss. Bro broken Ball uh, sponsor. Por Dio. No, but w here's, here's, your, here's another sponsor uh, idea for you. You get a designated towel person. They, they wear a sponsored gear, sponsor gear, like maybe like a, no, like a, like, a, like a fluorescent vest like they wear at the airport, and they're the ball person. They're the, they're, the, they're the towel person, and, they're, and they've got specialized gear with the sponsor. Home Depot towel person. Yes. There you go. Wait, wait, no. Who makes who makes good towels? I don't think Home Depot. Todd, Todd, let me turn off Pablo's. Let me turn off Pablo. <laughs> Pablo, you want to join the, the conversation? <laughs> Pablo's okay. mic is on. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so, so now, so when Todd sits there and talks to Pablo, Pablo can actually respond. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Pablo's mic is on. Pablo's got great insight. Maybe like his English is terrible. Maybe the 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 <laughs> JC Penny towel sponsor. JC Penny. Oh. oh, that's a good shot. Pablo has some great insight. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, towel companies. <laughs> towel companies. We already have a towel timeout. That's yeah. true. We've yeah. been working on that for a while. We got. This is our second towel time towel sponsor. So uh, Fran Davis uh, brings up an excellent point, you know, mentally. Lalo kind of gave up mentally, and and, Puti and uh, Garay really needs to just keep his foot on the gas. <laughs> Which one are you talking about? Lalo or Lalo? There you go. That's a good shot. Lalo, Lalo. Just so, say Lalo. So, you know, so sometimes what we just saw right there, Portillo, you know, a kind of, a, kind of a, 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 a wild rally, you know, like a hard rally to get a good shot out of, uh -huh. and he put a ball down from a tough angle. Maybe that's what he needs to turn it around here. You know, he got, he got a success where he didn't expect it necessarily. Yeah, yeah I mean, Garay has to keep – Fran is absolutely right. Yeah. Garay has to keep his foot on the gas here. Oh, we got because you don't want – there's no time – timeout, Garay. Okay. Yeah, timeout, Garay. That's a good timeout. We'll take a short break. Be back for the rest of game two on IRT Live. The Gearbox leather sticks to my hand like – it is my skin. The best feeling in the world. You pull that thing out of the package, and you can kind of just feel it still molded in, into the way they packaged it. It's honestly is one of the best feelings ever. You put the new glove, and you're like, I got this. It's so light and so like comfortable that I feel like I'm playing with, with my bare hand. The grip is a lot better, so I love having new gloves. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So here we are. Neither player has a timeout now. All right. Uh, there's a long road ahead of Portillo. Oh, that's a great serve. 
Oh, he gave up on it. See that? He wasn't getting that ball. He gave up on it. No, he, he could have had a cape. It, he wasn't getting it. It was up. He he stopped and started. Eleven two. Should be eleven. Eleven three. Another. No, that's got to be lower. See, that was. Um, oh. Oh, Ooh, great wrong. shot selection. Yeah. Guess wrong. That's what Troy was doing yesterday to Dylan, but Dylan was not like leaning right. He was just standing there, and it was right yeah. to him. <laughs> yeah. No, I think. Uh, I think. I think uh, the. I think we might be. Twelve three. We might be seeing Portillo kind of mailing it in. Not not that he's gonna mail it in, but. Ooh. Ooh. He Ooh. gave him that one. See, that's where. I, I you you make two or three of those mental mistakes right there. That just gives Portillo says I can just I have to. The bottom line is it doesn't matter how much of the game you play, you have to score 15 points. Mm -hmm. So it, your sure. opponent's sure. score is irrelevant. Yep. But you know what, Dean? Only takes 11 to win or tw 26 to win. <laughs> Alvaro says it. I, it's so much easier to get to 11 than 15. <laughs> Reverse oh. pinch. It's my favorite shot, shot right shot. there. It's, it's like my shot. favorite shot right there. See, 15, 15, 15, 11. This Steve knows it. Steve, I gave it to him yeah. a couple times. I think we got it on video too, Steve. Let's cue it. In the truck, cue that video. <laughs> Ace to the backhand. Set up, back wall. Turn and take a forehand again, reverse. Take that reverse pinch wow, forehand. Wow, nice right there. Play right there, Garay. That's a really tough shot to execute right there. 3-3. Three, three. That ball 13. was behind. That ball was behind him, and he and he still executed the the uh, the pinch, the splat pinch. All right, we got 13-3. Yeah, short ball. Good ceiling ball. This is going to come off the back wall. Oh. Big setup. Right to him. Yep. Down the line, winner. You know, I mean, he's making. Lalo Garay. No timeouts left. I mean, he's Game point. He's making him hit that shot, but still, a, a lot of these rallies, I feel like there's just three or four extra shots. You know? That you you don't see those in the tier ones because the play the ele the play is just elevated. Nice shot. Well, I'll put it to you this way: if either those two, if if one of these two players is Kane, those <laughs> are no not. Extra. There's no extra shots. <laughs> that you know, Kane takes those balls, and there's no pass with another follow up. There's a kill. <laughs> you know, and to be fair, all the top guys. That's 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 a differentiator for them. It's a Landa. Yeah, Landa. Landa is, Landa is a killer skip. He is amazing <laughs> at putting that ball down to where it's, it's just demoralizingly irretrievable. Here we go. Second game point. Big setup with the forehand. Oh, takes a weird bounce. Oh. oh thought he made skipped it. it in. Skipped it in. All right. I thought it was good. I thought it was good, too. From, from here up here, look good. Okay, game one goes to Portillo, 15-12. Game two, Garay, 15-3. We're getting ready for the breaker. We'll be back right after the sponsor words on IRT Live.
it's, it's all about passion. I think uh, I, I don't have anything to prove anymore in the sport. Uh, at the beginning of my career, I wanted to be one of the best, but uh, I have nothing to prove. I, I play with no pressure. I'm just enjoying every moment. But uh, when people are cheering for you and 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 stop their whatever they're doing, their jobs or or to go watch uh, you play, I mean that that makes you uh, feel uh, good and 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 makes you uh, want to try hard for and, and give a good show for that people. I'm Alvaro Beltran. Get your M40 so you can play like me. The presentation supports uh, a lot of players. Uh, they help with uh, expenses and uh, room and all that kind of stuff. So it's a lot of help for, for all the players. It uh, motivates all the players to, to, to play more tournaments, to train harder, to keep our level high. It makes me feel special because they are uh, really nice people. They, they treat you nice. They make you feel like, like you're, you're important. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Dean Bear here with the IRT. In the booth with me is Todd Boss of Boss Consult, the Pro Rackable Stats and Boss Consulting. Both of them, yeah. Uh, so ProRackableStats.com. It's where we get all of our information. Um, uh, if I haven't said it before, I want to thank you for coming by. Wow, first point. Today, Todd. Wow. Blown up all. Okay. Who's our, Todd, want to say thank you for coming by. Like I said before, oh, uh, you know, great. A lot of guys in the chat box uh, liking this match. Thank you so much. Please like our post, mm -hmm. share our feed. Um, would love to hear from you guys in the box. Want to have uh, you know one of the friends of the tour, Mike Martinez, sporting his Prokenex player, yeah. supporting. I think he picked Barai in the in the. Um, in one of the prelims, and I said, oh, you're a little biased. <laughs> he said, you think? <laughs> oh, I, wow. Tough. See, that was a De La Rosa dive. That no was. reason, to, not getting that ball. Ah, uh, he was close. He was close. I would have divin. Divin. Jeez. <laughs> you would have divin, <laughs> and you wouldn't have you wouldn't have gotten up. I divved for that ball. <laughs> I no, but we said that early in De La Rosa's career. De La Rosa would dive for balls you know, that he is not getting. And then, you know, now that doesn't happen too often from De La Rosa. You know, age comes into play. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're, again, uh, single and 22, you could do that. But when you're like 28 and maybe married or maybe have a kid, you're like, ah, I don't know if I'm going to dive right now. So <laughs> if I heard you right there, Dean, you're telling me that once I get married, <laughs> I, I can't dive anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Well, first of all, if you dive, you're not getting up. That's, so no, let's, no, that's let's be honest. Maybe, maybe yeah. I shouldn't personalize this. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, a, a player who dives for a ball like that, they, they, they're confident in their ability to get stuff. I mean, we used to see Jason Menino dive for stuff that he would be diving and be in midair before the guy finished his shot because he was anticipating a cross court a cross court shot. You know, some guys are just amazingly adept at it. <laughs> Yeah, I think he was single when he did that. Mm. Well, you know, if we, oh, Ooh. yeah, replay. replay. Hey, got a swing. I'm taking that shot. You know. I'm hitting you in the back. Sorry. I, I am. I'm not holding up. I think that's a, uh, that, that's, that's a safety hold up, you know. But uh, if, he, if he swung and ripped him in the leg, is it a, is it a replay or is it an avoidable? What do, you think the, what do you think the referee's calling? If he ripped him in the back of the leg right there. I think he'd call it avoidable. Exactly. Point made. How <laughs> so well, Bri Brian in the chat box, diving in marriage. Is a, I, I'm 
totally joking oh. around, but what a rollout oh. there That's tough. by Garay. Uh, totally joking around with the marriage and the diving. I mean, if, if you really thought I was being serious, uh, I'm not. So there you have it. Wow, we've got some uh, we've got some tough critics. On nah, your the, buddy uh, Steve uh, Hackman, he, this guy loves you in the <laughs> chat box. Yeah, we great, good, good choice. <laughs> Todd, thank you. It called you a stud. I don't know I'm about a, that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I think my wife is listening. Yeah, she might think I'm a stud, but uh, I don't know about anything. I don't think else. she does. I don't think so either. <laughs> I mean, let's 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 be honest with our capabilities here. You know, I'm I'm known in racquetball world because I put a bunch of stuff into a database. You know what? You know what? You know what didn't happen here today? There's a, a phone didn't fall into the court. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Short serve. Lalo uh, Portillo trying to you know, dial it up a notch. So I go back to that uh, that 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 uh, hinder call. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, that's a that's a. What's interesting about that is, yeah, if he had hit the guy, maybe it's a, maybe it's an avoidable, maybe not. Oh, that's a good get. More likely, you're getting an avoidable. But more likely. So 80%, yes. 20%, you're not. Okay. Well, uh, so, but where he was in the in the court, I know we're talking now about a point that happened three minutes ago. But where the ball was in the court, you know, that the rule says you need to give it a, cro a cross court and a, and a down the line. But the ball is in the middle of the court, right? So, where's his down the line? Is it to this, the right? Is it to the right or is to, it the to the right? The right where La Portillo was. Yeah. That was straight in. He might have hit him straight in. But <laughs> more importantly, I, I come back to this a lot when I, when, I, when I ref. You try to penalize the player who caused the problem, right? So what was the problem in that rally? Bad serve. It was a bad serve. But you, you should be penalized for and, having a bad and serve. And what happened there is that the guy who was penalized, frankly, was the, not the guy that hit the bad serve. Yeah. It was the receiver who had a ball, and he had to hold up. That's that's my. That's he didn't have to hold up. He didn't have to hold. Up. He <laughs> did hold up. He chose to. That was a choice. Yeah, you know, but by holding up, he penalized himself, and he didn't. And he didn't get the benefit of the doubt. So that leads me right back to what I said. Take the shot. <laughs> <laughs> if he if he if he hits Portillo, is Portillo ever going to serve that again? Here we go, another towel timeout. Players looking after, and the towel timeout. You know, when they when they're out there again, uh, this that's extreme safety. A guy can slip mm -hmm. on a uh, uh, on a wet spot and twist his ankle, oh, blow out you know, an blow Achilles, Achilles. You know, you know, and then then he can't work on Monday. And that's not what any of these players. No, want. I mean like ask Alvaro. You know, Alvaro tore up his knee, and he he missed he missed a year on tour. That that's his livelihood. Alvaro Alvaro slammed into the back glass at a. At a, uh, what was it, Pan American Games uh, event. Yeah. Did he miss any work from that one? No. Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> I like that he took a forehand there. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. A little impatient on that. You know, but you're in the middle of a court, you know, going mano y mano. You, sometimes you get caught up. We don't have a score there. Uh, Pablo, what is it, what is the score? 3 2? Let me get the score. We'll get the score for you guys Tough. in a second. What a nice return. I mean, that's. that's Zero serves three. Zero serves three. That's like, third, that's like the third time that Garai has done that. You know, and really just kind of. Return that with authority on the backhand side. I, I, I'm trying but to mix it up a little bit if I'm uh, Portillo. But he's he's got to he's got to get something out of it. So he's got to get a he's got to earn a point after having a good shot. Oh, I don't know why he wouldn't yeah. have done the reverse yeah. pinch. Yeah. Players exchange pleasantries. In the 80s, that wouldn't have been a pleasantries. I'll tell you right now. Maybe, <laughs> I don't mm. even think it would have been in the 90s either. <laughs> So can so so can you have an avoidable hinder hitting into the back wall? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I think an avoidable hinder is when you take away an offensive shot. Nope. Yes, I've seen someone roll one from the back <laughs> wall, but that's total luck. <laughs> so
So, Todd, you, you've been... You've been watching the sport for a while, obviously keeping all the stats. And mm -hmm. have you you've noticed mm -hmm. that you know players aren't at each other like they nope. used to be? Nope. The, uh, Why do you think that is? Do you, what What do you think changed in the sport? Is it is it the more international influence? Is it more camaraderie with the players and the money and people traveling together? I think I think all of those come into factor. I think that uh, players in the old days didn't didn't. Ooh. Ooh. They didn't. They didn't dislike each other. You know, like when there was the Kane and Sudsy rivalry, or I'm sorry, the the Cliff and Sudsy rivalry. They they didn't dislike each other, but there was no love lost on the court, mm -hmm. and you could see it in their play. They 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 did not hold up. They took they took shots. Absolutely. Um. So we'll stay here. The players are taking taking a timeout for Garay. So four quick points for Portillo. Mm -hmm. Um. Good timeout for Garay, or is it a little too early? No, I think this is good. I mean, remember, you know, you have two timeouts, right? So you want to try to split. If you're gonna, if you're gonna burn them both, you know, try to. You have one try timeout. To, try to use one in the tiebreaker. So, yeah. I don't think it's too early because if he doesn't break the, if he doesn't break his train of concentration, if he doesn't kind of break the flow, suddenly it's seven nothing, and then it's too late. You know, because he can, you know, Portillo can just put an ace in, boom, it's a point. You know, and, you know if, if you get down, if you get down eight nine something just a couple of fluke plays and you're out of the game. So you want to stem, you want to try to get back in earlier than later in the, in the, in the tiebreaker. What are you guys in the chat box? What do you guys think? What do you think is going to happen here with Portillo? Again, is it a good timeout in your opinion? In the chat box, I'd love to see your answers there, uh, guys. But play, Portillo didn't come out of the court, I don't think. I, he's still in the court down there now. Uh, mm -hmm. I, he may have came out, came out and took a real quick, drink of water Ooh. but 10 seconds left we'll go back to the court side yep. and, and we'll see Portillo uh, you'll see he'll just playing around in the front of the court um, when we turn the camera to the front court you guys will see mm -hmm. it there it is uh, right there that was now Garay is back in so that but was, was it a shirt change and a glove change which that's important he, he took a little too much time there which uh, which uh, Portillo's camp is now calling out, probably rightly so. I think if we'd had Scott here, Mr. Professional Ref, on the timer, we might have seen a penalty there. Wow, what a great. Well, I mean, yep. I mean, but, you know, Garay wasn't taking the time. He's sitting there. Referee said 10 seconds, and he mm -hmm. made his way back into the court. And to be fair, the referee wasn't in position until he started calling, so. Garay. Looking to get out of the goose egg. Jeez. Skipped it in. It's not what That's a Rodrigo Montoya serve right there. Yeah. The second time he did that this match. Yeah, you don't see that too often. You know, but with, with someone. Nice shot. Very smooth. Very smooth. Yeah. You know, with someone who's, who hits the ball that smoothly yeah uh, or, or that hard and he's aiming that low on the wall because he's hitting with such pace sometimes you sometimes you skip a servant it seems crazy to an amateur but yeah Ooh. That's, yep no complaint. right back to no how could you got it jumped over the ball yeah Fran Davis is, is sending her uh, pleasantries to you, Todd, saying how she likes your analysis, as most of the fans do. Oh, well, thanks, Fran. Ooh, good serve. Great. Great get. Ooh. Oh. He had that ball. He did. Almost had that. But was he go? I, I couldn't see because there's uh, Mark Barron in front of me. <laughs> but um, did he was he going for the front wall there? Yeah, yeah, he was, right, so, he was, he so was trying he was, to scoop it. You, so if he was diving more to the back wall, might have been a better choice. Per, yeah, perhaps. Yeah. Towel timeout sponsored by Zurich Construction and performed by Abraham <laughs> Benya again. <laughs> and and a great job he's doing out there. <laughs> yeah. So for those of you who don't know Mr. Pena, he represented Mexico on in the international level back in the m early to mid-2000s before the reign of uh, Beltran and De La Rosa really took over. 
Ooh. I want to thank everyone for watching. Appreciate it. I mean, I'm starting to wonder if this is going to be a, 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 a donut and a tiebreaker. Oh. Yeah. Don't see that too often. No. <laughs> so never count your chickens before they hatch, but I see a completely different third game than we saw from the second game out of Portillo. What's he doing differently? Executing. Mm. Garay trying to be cute right there. Yeah, I, 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 I think I agree with, uh, with, with our producer off mic here. <laughs> I think uh, we're seeing a combination of, you know, Eduardo's playing the game that we saw in the first game, but, but Eduardo's really not executing. His, his uh, Garay really needed to take what he did in game two and, and keep his pedal on the gas. Oh. And it's not easy to do when you got Lalo no. uh, Portillo making shots like that. No, that's, I mean, he, 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 that was a professional dive right there, and he still nearly got it. But, you know, the, the, the better point is, is that Portillo is not leaving that up to even be diveable for. Diveable. <laughs> diveable is a word. Diveable. Diveable for? I don't, I, I, don't think, I don't think that's a word, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go for it. <laughs> retrievable. That ball was not retrievable. All right, we got 8-0. Not, Gar Garay needs a miracle now. He needs a he needs a hail mary. Portillo isn't even bothering with a drive serve anymore because he knows he's getting he's getting setups. Yeah, not that. No. Nope. Executed there. All right, here we go. Got to get off that zero, Todd. Garay needs to execute a first serve and get either an ace or a three point rally right here. He needs to get off the Schneid. Schneid is there. Oh, great serve. He's got what he wanted. And he left it up. Good pull out right there. Oh, oh. tough. Nice, good that's, that's execution. That is a touch, that is a clutch tough sh shot right there. It's a pretty big crowd here mm -hmm. for a Saturday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Little Billy Joel. Nope. Skipped it in. Nine. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I like the, I, I like that because he had it. But I mean, that's a lower percentage shot at 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 at, at uh, eight zero down. Look at Garay's body language. It's the same as zero zero, mm -hmm. and I like it. Nice shot. All right, so, okay, that's what he needs. You know, he's in the front court. He's got to set up. He hits a pinch. Not screwing around with a pass. No side wall. No, you know, it's yeah. front wall, side wall, coming back to the middle. He's, you know, he hasn't shown a lot of serve variation. Just power. Just power. You know. But none of them, you know, he hasn't dropped one to the right. Mm -mm. Hasn't thrown a Z serve in no. there. I mean, he hasn't thrown a jam in. He hasn't do it, tried to do a crack serve. Those are all things a coach on site is going to do. It's going gonna, it's gonna to force you to, you know, think more. Second set of eyes there. Mm -hmm. No, that's true. You know, but that being said, you know, these guys are all longtime players. They, they, they should know. You know, they should know how to do the adjustments by now. Tough. That's <laughs> that's a solid and shot. And a fist pump. That is that is match point. That is bottom board from the backcourt. Zero ten serving zero. Well here we go. Portillo thinking. I lob. Why why go away from it? Tough. That came off the back wall. That's a I don't know about Calling that. Calling a skip. Winner, yeah, winner, I don't, I don't appeal used. And, and that's not a bad appeal. I mean, God forbid you get a replay true. Or, or a point, it game over. No, it's true. It didn't cost them anything. And the only, you know, it did look a little funny, but only because because um, uh, Garay kind of hit the hit the back glass in the middle of it. But maybe he thought it was like a deep court skip. 
No. Garay has not been first serve percentage in. No, that's why I think he should he, he should have been trying to go to a, a Z serve. He could hit a hard Z with a lot more um, first serve percentage. Set up, maybe? Oh. Good, Good dive by Portillo. See, I don't like that shot. I don't like that shot. <laughs> Good one right there. Is that pinch? There you go. Good get. Down the Heat. line. No. There you go. Nice. Okay. Gra the crowd nice. likes Garai's first point. Why is he pinching? Ten more to go. Yeah. Why is he pinching with the guy with his opponent in front of him who can dive and get balls? It's not it's not it's not an intelligent shot. It's poor it, shot selection. It's a, it's a it's a low percentage shot that he's got to execute perfectly to get the win. And even if he executes it perfectly, you've got a rangy guy who can dive and get those balls that might just sit there and flick it to the ceiling and make you hit another one. Towel timeout again. Garay looking to, to get off with another runoff with a bunch of points. <laughs> hey, that's, that's a good, good serve. There you go. I mean, you got to start, so like, like I was saying mm -hmm. before, so Garay still has to, s to win the match has to get to 11. Yeah. So yeah. the amount of points Lalo uh, uh, Portillo has doesn't make a difference. There's a side wall, front wall winner. Yeah. He thought it skipped back here. Yeah. Oh. Automatic appeal. That was side wall, front wall, but... It, the guy on the right really can't see that. That's a disagree and a no decision. Replay. That will be a replay. Wow. That was a sidewall front wall. And you know what? The, the, the line judge on the right, he really can't see if that hit sidewall front wall. That's too difficult to see. Oh. Oh, I skipped it in. Who's, our, who's uh, serving as our line judges, uh, Dylan Pruitt and it looks like Dave Austin. And that's Dave in the Dave green in, shirt? Dave in, right? in the blue shirt in the blue on shirt. the right against the wall. Oh, okay. Um, in my opinion, his, uh, his view is a little obstructed with the photographer in the way. Yeah, we do have photographer from the D.C. area extraordinaire, Ken Fife, on site tonight taking shots of everybody, which is great. We're going to... If you don't follow Ken, definitely give him a follow, and he posts his shots. Uh, uh, Two ten. Usu usually, usually right after the tournament. Short, short, short serve. Short. Dean, what's the what's the most you've come back from being ten points down on a tiebreaker? Tiebreaker to win. Me, I was down ten two. Wow. One one, and uh, I was coaching at Junior Nationals. We were down ten four in the breaker, and won eleven ten. So it's not over. Oh, dove too early. Side out. Time out. I thought he took his already. Oh, no, no Garay, Garay did. Garay All took right, his. time out on the court. We'll take a short break, and then we will definitely be back for the end of this match right here on IRT Live. I think one of the biggest things about Gearbox is just the quality and the re reliability of their product. I know that no matter what I do, whatever product I choose, whatever racket I choose, I'm going to like it, no matter what. It's something that's very comforting as a player um, to have a very consistent product in your hand every single practice session, match, after match. It's just really nice to have. My name is Bobby Horn. Don't make a mistake. Get yourself an M40 right now.
Welcome up. back, ladies and gentlemen. So Portillo looking to end out this match. I love Nick again. Is it going to come off the back wall? This one might not. Oh, yes, it will. Good serve. Nope. Again. Oh, in front of him, and you pinch down the line. Yep. Repinch. Yep. Winner, winner, yep. Lalo yep. Portillo. Wow. That's tough. Great match between these two. I know it was 11-2 in the breaker, so people might think that that was, you know, kind of a kind of a blowout at the end. But those two played a really good match. Yeah. You know, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a short break. Uh, before the start of the next game, we're going to come back right here. Stay here. We're going to have Lalo uh, Portillo in the booth with us uh, talking. And uh, we'll take about maybe a one-minute commercial break. We'll be back with the winner, Lalo Portillo right here on IRT Live. Like Gerbox leather sticks to my hand like it is my skin. The best feeling in the world. You pull that thing out of the package and you can kind of just feel it still molded in, into the way they packaged it. It's honestly is one of the best feelings ever. You put the new glove and you're like, I got this. It's so light and so like comfortable that I feel like I'm playing with with my bare hand. The grip is a lot better, so I love having new gloves. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm with the very tall Lalo Portillo. So we were getting very confused in the broadcast saying the word Lalo. Um, but we knew Lalo would win. We just didn't know which one. Uh, big big run in the tiebreaker. Uh, were you nervous at all when, when you weren't able to kind of get over the hump there? Oh, I wasn't nervous. No, um, I knew Lalo Garay. <laughs> Uh, he's a great player. He's uh, he dives for every ball. You, I, I'm sure you saw like a lot of towel timeouts. Um, actually, I'm not gonna lie. In, in the first game, he got so many balls that I I got tired. I mean, it's uh, I'm pretty sure he's tired for diving, and I was tired for shooting and shooting and shooting. But um, yeah, I, I knew that this game is gonna uh, was gonna be like this. Um, and thanks for the interview. You you owe me this interview. No, I, I, no, no, since Atlanta. Okay, so I want to take you back to game number one. You were stuck at 10. It was 10-5. It was 10-5. And then it became like 10-8. It was 11-9. So there was a lot of points scored, a lot of side outs, a lot of action going on, but you weren't able to get a point. You finally got that 12th point. You were pretty excited. Mentally, how did you recover from that? Uh, well, I'm. I consider myself like mentally tough. Uh, so I was. I was thinking, okay, uh, let's get a point. Let's get a point. One more. One more. One more. And yeah, th that's that's all I was thinking. Uh, I, I think it was 11-9, 9-11, 11-9, 9-11. And yeah, that that uh, point number 12. Actually, I, I was uh, relieved that I got it first. Um, yeah, I think it was very important at that point. So what? Now let's let's shift to game number two. What happened that he just kind of rolled rolled over you really in game number two? He really he did. Yeah, he uh, he got very good serves, and I missed a lot of balls. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I mean, this happens a lot. I mean, uh, in any moment the game can change. And you saw the, in the third in the third game, it was the same thing. Well, you just regrouped. I mean, you came out, you you served well. Uh, what we've noticed up here is that both of you guys were hitting a lot of pinches with your opponent standing in front of you. Did you, did you feel that? Were you were you looking for your your winning shot? Yeah, um, because I wasn't 
because I was passing him, like I was doing a lot of down the lines, uh, cross courts. He was getting uh, pretty much everything, and so I was I was thinking, okay, next the next shot is a pinch, right? But my pinches were a little bit too high, and uh, because Lalo is very fast, he he got him, and I missed a couple. Well, yeah, I missed uh, a lot, I think, <laughs> in the second game. <laughs> and the, th the third game, well, I just I f I was more focused, and I. I just let the ball uh, down a little bit, like I lowered the ball. Very good. Well, congratulations into the finals. You're expected to be there. You're the number one seed. You're ranked nine on the IRT right now. So congratulations, very well fought match against an opponent who some may have said is, is starting to rise and you kind of, you, you put them down and that's a very good work, uh, Lalo. So next up on this, we will, next up on this court, what do you think of this next match that's coming up? Zalata, who I don't know if you saw yeah, yeah. against Mario, played amazing. Um, but Sebastian is extremely tough. What do you see in this next match? Well, um, if I have to bet, it's for Sebastian. I know Momo played really well uh, against Mario. Actually, I played Momo a tournament before, in uh, three weeks ago, maybe. And uh, he didn't play like that <laughs> in that tournament. So. I think because Sebastian is more consistent, I think he will he'll win. Uh, All right, so now the point is, is there anybody out there that you need to thank? I know you have a lot of sponsors. You're very active on social media. Obviously, over this pandemic, I saw you've also been on Twitch TV playing your video games. So any anyone you need to thank? Yeah, I want to thank all my sponsors, Gearbox, uh, Reaching Your Dream Foundation. Uh, I know... You, uh, if you don't know Reaching Ring Foundation, um, it's uh, they help us a lot, international junior players, uh, st uh, up and coming stars. Um, yeah, if you have a dollar, a hundred, a thousand, <laughs> if you want to donate to them, uh, do it. You are helping international junior players to get to these tournaments and uh, grow the sport a lot. I want to thank uh, Margot Scott. Uh, she told me he was gonna be, she was gonna be here, but. She, she watching. Yeah, she was watching, I'm sure. And she will be here tomorrow. Uh, I want to thank all my family. Uh, I'm pretty sure they are watching this. My friends, my coach, Ruben Martinez, my coach, uh, Fernando Mota. Uh, who else? <laughs> Rosewell Family Care. Uh, Mari Melendez. And I, if I'm missing someone, I'm sorry, but <laughs> yeah, thanks to all of them. All right, so he brought up Reaching Your Dream Foundation, very big supporter of not only players, but the tour also. And their website is www.give2rydf.org. So congratulations again. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back for the next semifinal right here, Severna Park Racquetball and Fitness Club. We are in the championship court at the Wintergreen Classic IRT Pro-Am right here on IRT Live. <laughs> 